All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith, a.k.a. The Salty Boomer, and this is the Aimless News Report for Monday, January 9th, 2023. Government health advice. Avoid sunlight and fresh air as much as possible. Trap bacteria and germs on your face for at least eight hours a day. Watch television news propaganda daily. Instill a sense of anxiety and fear in your children. Get injected with untested vaccines. Remember, always trust the science and follow what your government tells you. All right, we have an interesting development. Freedom of Information Act documents prove that COVID-19 vaccines were treated as medical countermeasures to a bioweapon attack. Entire COVID operation run by U.S. National Security Council with no manufacturing safeguards or disclosures. New docs review the Department of Defense controlled the COVID-19 program from the start. The FDA vaccine approval process was theater a combination of the PREP Act, the Emergency Use Authorization, and other transactions authority shielded big pharma agencies and medical participants that delivered unregulated vaccines from any liability. According to congressionally passed statutes, research of active laws and extra details obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, the Department of Defense owns, implements, and oversees the COVID-19 vaccine program as a countermeasure to foreign attack. While the public was bombarded with an orchestrated fear campaign, the U.S. government managed the COVID response as a national security threat. The research and documents were obtained by a former executive of a pharmaceutical contract research organization, Sasha Latipova. And I have that substack right here. And here she is right here. And this goes into great depth of what this is all about. And the link is in the description below, as always. According to Congressional... Where was I here? Oh, yeah. Sasha Latipova and intensive legal researcher Catherine Watt. The three-legged stool, the undercover operation, was orchestrated utilizing three critical legal maneuvers. Emergency Youth Authorization... PREP Act, and other transactions authority. President Trump declared a public health emergency on March 13, 2020, under the Stafford Act, putting the National Security Council in charge of the COVID policy. COVID-19 vaccines are medical countermeasures, a gray area of products that are not regulated as vaccines or medicines. They put the National Security Council in charge and treated it as an act of war, claims Latipova. According to Operation Warp Speed, ASPR reports the DOD ordered, oversaw, and tightly managed the development, manufacture, and distribution of COVID countermeasures, mainly utilizing the Department of Defense's previously established network of military contractors and consortia. Department of Defense, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, BARDA, and the Department of Health and Human Services, ordered all COVID countermeasures included vaccines as prototype demonstrations of large-scale manufacturing, avoiding regulations and transparency under other transaction authority as prototypes used under emergency use authorization during a public health emergency. COVID countermeasures, including vaccines, need not comply with the U.S. laws for manufacturing quality, safety, and labeling. The implication is that the United States government authorized and funded the deployment of non-compliant biological materials on Americans without clarifying their prototype legal status, making the materials not subject to normal regulatory oversight, all while maintaining a fraudulent pseudo-regulatory presentation to the public, states Latipova. Most incredible is the fact that current laws enacted by the United States Congress appear to make the cover-up actions legal. Under the public health emergency, 
medical countermeasures are not regulated or safeguarded as pharmaceutical products. The American people were led to believe that the FDA, CDC, and figureheads like Anthony Fauci oversaw this COVID-19 vaccine program. Their involvement was an orchestrated information operation. All decisions concerning the COVID-19 vaccine research, materials acquisition, distribution, and information sharing were tightly controlled by the Department of Defense. Hundreds of COVID countermeasure contracts have been uncovered. Many disclosures are in redacted form. However, Latipova and Watt have found sources to fill in the details. A, rev a review of these contracts indicates a high degree of control by the U.S. government. It specifies the scope of de deliverables as demonstrations and prototypes. Only while excluding clinical trials and manufacturing quality control from the scope of the work paid for by the contracts. To ensure that the pharma is free to conduct, conduct the fake clinical trials without financial risk, the contracts include removal of all liability for the manufacturers and any contractors along the supply and distribution chain under the 2005 PREP Act and related federal legislation. Why is no action by regulators or courts? According to Ladipova and Watt, a combination of recently passed legislation and executive orders make it legal to lie. The HHH secretary is accountable to no one if the health national emergency continues to be extended by Congress every three months. Now, what did potato head Biden just do? The emergency order was supposed to end on July, uh, January 11th. He just extended it on Friday to April 11th, another three months. So is this a cover for the FDA and the CDC, all of them, or were we lied to from the start? And our own Department of Defense was actually in charge of the whole vaccine fiasco. This Sasha Ladipova sure seems to think so. This is in the description down below. You can check it out for yourself and make come to your own conclusions. I always encourage you to do your own research and draw your own conclusions. On to the Moderna website. Let's see who are some strategic collaborators with Moderna. AstraZeneca, Merck, Vertex, BARDA. We just heard about BARDA, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. It's the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services responsible for the procurement and development of medical countermeasures. In September 2016, Moderna received an award of approximately $125 million from BARDA. DARPA, the DARPA Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. DARPA awarded Moderna up to approximately $25 million to research and develop potential mRNA medicines to primarily support our vaccine. So our government is in the middle of all of this. Now this is an old article, actually from November 10th, 2021, but it bears repeating. Moderna COVID-19 vaccine patent dispute headed to court. And I think they actually wound up co-owning this because the United States National Institute of Health Scientists played a major role in developing Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. And the agency intends to defend its claim as co-owner of patents of the shots. So Moderna was only giving credit to their scientists. The National Institute of Health wants to be co-owners of the mRNA vaccine. This is just one gigantic web of corruption, like everything else. Uh, who, who gave Bill Gates, how is Bill Gates qualified to talk about vaccines of any kind? He wants to st strengthen the World Health Organization by creating a special organization dedicated to pandemics. So active preparedness for the next pandemic because as you've said, it's not a matter of if, but when, how do we actively prepare? And are you seeing anywhere in the world where there's actual preparedness for a future pandemic right now? Well, there's some good. 
Okay, that's enough out of you. Did you notice what she said? Because he said, it's not if, it's when. When is the next pandemic? Oh, don't worry. They got it coming. The World Health Organization, Johns Hopkins and Bill Gates just conducted another pandemic simulation. This time, the virus is deadlier and targets the children. The Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security partnered with the World Health Organization and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to conduct catastrophic contagion, an exercise to simulate a global pandemic that is deadlier than coronavirus and especially dangerous for children. Bill Gates was in attendance. The group conducted catastrophic contagion in Brussels, Belgium on October 23rd 2022. Now, if you remember back, Event 201 was a pandemic simulation with a coronavirus, and that was carried out in October of 2019. What happened in January of 2020? We got a coronavirus. Now, this next one, simulation, of course, was carried out on October 23rd, 2022. So when can we expect our next catastrophic contagion? Oh, it's coming. I threw this in here also, the World Economic Forum's website from Davos 2022 to Davos 2023. Read about what they got for you coming up in your future. Nothing but fun. And it also includes the next pandemic Let's see here. I think that one's like number four, something like that. And don't use the R word. That's a recession. Preparing for the next pandemic requires ending health disparities. Racism is not only when black people or brown people cannot breathe because of police violence. Racism was when black people, brown people, people of color take their last breath because of policy violence. When they are denied life-saving, pandemic-ending medicines. When they can't access care or education because debt is choking them. So, of course, the World Economic Forum and whoever this dumb idiot is, Winnie Bianiemi, <laughs> has got to bring racism into it, of course. Okay, don't believe that digital ID trackers are on a way. It isn't a conspiracy theory when it's actually being developed. This is some clown from the World Economic Forum. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Stay tuned. Not quite operational yet, but it's something they are working on. They're going to track everything you do, every move you make, and you will be awarded a score, a social credit score, and they will take your central bank digital currency away if you do not do what they want you to. Moving on, the maker of puberty blockers funded the original study that led to gender-affirming care for minors. Always follow the money. A Dutch investigative report has revealed that the 2006 study upon which the entire medical experiment of child sex changes is based and was funded by a maker of puberty blockers. What a shocker. Always follow the money. Here's a father that has taken advantage of their insane, ridiculous gender laws. A father, an Ecuadorian journalist, has now legally changed his gender from male to female so that he can attempt to secure full custody of his two young daughters. Bravo. On December 30th, Rene Salinas Ramos, 47, announced publicly that he has just legally changed his gender identification to female. 
to circumvent a legal system which he claimed unfairly favors the mother in custody cases. Being a father in this country is punished, and I'm only seen as a provider. The law says that the one who has the right is the woman. As of this moment, I am female. Now, I'm also a mom. That's how I consider myself. I am very sure of my sexuality. What I have sought is to give the love and protection that a mother can give to her children. This is fucking hilarious. He is using their ass nine laws against them. The Ecuadorian gender identity law passed in 2015 allows adults to change their identity, their gender identity by self-declaration. So there you go. Turn that shit around right on them. Slap them in the fucking head with it. California Reparations Task Force Chair. Blacks are owed $1 million each and the homeless should be first in line. So California, who never had any slaves and thus never had any slave owners, has this Camilla Moore claim during an interview that all black Californians should receive $1 million each and black people who are homeless should be the first in line. Got to love California. Libs of TikTok revealed California school district facilitating gender transitions on children without parental consents. Documents obtained through a recent Freedom of Information Act request revealed that a California school district partnered with a health care facility to provide children with gender transition hormones and surgeries without parental consent. Yeah, be careful what your kids are doing out in California, people. California. Remember those Twitter ER doctors who claimed hordes of patients were dying daily of COVID? Yeah, they were fake. What a shocker. The transgender doctor of sociology and feminist studies was keen interest in poetry who used they, them pronouns was, in fact, a stock photo described on deposit photos, a royalty-free image site, as a smiling, happy, handsome Latino man outside headshot portrait. <laughs> so all of it was fake. Every bit of these Twitter ER doctors claiming that people were dying in grow, droves, it's all fake. This whole fucking thing was fake. Everything's fucking fake. All right. Dan Crenshaw does not like to be called Eyepatch McCain. People call me terrible names. I'm not allowed to clutch, clutch my pearls when I get called terrible names. But I fight back and people are like, how could you, Dan? How could you? How could you, Dan? Oh, they call me Eyepatch McCain. <laughs> yeah, they call me Eyepatch McCain. <laughs> No, they call me Eye Patch McCain. <laughs> but when I fight back, oh, how could you, Dan? You call me a rhino. You say I don't believe. The, 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 you know, Chris. Like we talked about the, the crazy crap that's said about me. <laughs> well, I Patch McCain, Dan Crenshaw does not like to be called I Patch McCain. So you know what to do. All right. Let's see what Steve Inman has for us today. Well, when you're a bachelor and it's a guy's weekend out, you always got to watch out for this guy. There's always this guy, the naked, drunken fool who just tackles you out of nowhere. This guy's like, I just got some trout, guys. You want to put it on the Barbie? And then there's this drunken fool on the friggin' white claw, naked as hell, emerald dangling, and now violating him in the water. That is a massive hit. That is way harder of a hit than the guy that got hit in the NFL and sent into cardiac arrest. And he didn't have shoulder pads on with a chest plate protector. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of the Aimless News. All you people with an IRA and 401k, the stock market lost 10% last year. That means your IRA or 401k went down 10%. This is the year to switch over to an IRA backed by gold. Go to protectyourhardearnedmoney.com or click the link below this video to get your free 2023 Wealth 
protection kit and protect your hard-earned money with the IRA backed by gold. All right, kiddos, that's going to do it for me for today. I will see you next time. Aloha. (laughs) 